Hello! So today we're going to look at Adventures by Leaf Flight by Moira Caldecott, illustrated by Lynn and Bill Teeple. This is an interesting storybook in that it was printed in parts. So if we take a look at this, Adventures by Leaf Flight, this piece here is not wholly attached to the book. It's not printed in the book. So they printed the book and then they printed separately these color plates and actually glued them into the book. So this was a fairly laborious process back when this was done. You know, this isn't something that was done by computer or automation. Human beings were sitting there printing off these individual plates and then putting them into place in the book so that you could get these color plates just on the pages. Because um, I don't know if you guys know how printing generally works, but especially in modern times, if you print something in color, you run the entire book through a color printer, and that means you're paying color processing p prices for every single page, even if it's a black and white page. And that can get expensive quickly. So this was an alternative where you could run it through a black and white printer, which is far cheaper, and then just print the things that you needed to print in color and put those pages in. So an interesting process to do this. So the basis of this book, and this is from 1978, is that there's a girl who is sick and she discovers mystical things that other people can't see because she's more attentive to the world around her, which is, you know, a very nice message. So you've got the storyline going, but what I'm more interested in are these color plates. They are very beautifully done with a nice richness of color. And I love this design in general. And I like how his bright stripes stand out against the more, okay, monochromatic, um, you know, roses and greens, and your eye is drawn right to him because of the bright colors used. So there's a lot of interesting composition and color choices in here that are very worth paying attention to and learning from. Like in this one, you've got the uh, creatures dancing around down in leaves, and you definitely get the sense of their scale because the flowers are fairly big compared to the people. And in this case, the people are not standing out. They're sort of disguised in there, which you know emphasizes this whole no one else can see them because they're not paying attention. The fairies aren't standing out in this case, but they do have the colorful ribbon that catches your eye and draws your attention to the flowers, which are more the focal point in this one. And then you've got the girl talking to the sparrow, and I love the details in her hair and her face. This is much more um, naturalistic, we'll call it. Realistic, not quite realistic because it's still like a, that, that gentle illustrative style, but I love the details in the flowers. I mean, you can definitely tell what kinds of flowers they are, you know, Johnny Jump Ups and the Daffodils. And that gives it a sense that it's a real world that has this fantasy stuff happening in it. So then we've got a scene with brightly colored fabrics and the swoop of the fabrics and then the shading underneath them. And then the little fairy creatures in there and the bells. So everything is just lovely done with this mixture of it's a real garden, but there are these little fantasy fairy creatures that fit well into it. So then we got some black and white illustrations, but clearly the focus of this are these beautiful color illustrations. So the two characters and the details of the fabric, the swoop of the fabric. Magical pig. That is just so cute. <laughs> Love the details of the face and then the giant cabbages and then the striped flowers. And even the black and white images have lovely detail in them, but you can see the difference. If all of it had been black and white illustrated, it would have been lovely but not have the same kind of impact as these color plates that they stuck in here. They're playing with um, dandelions and flying down in them. Nice brightness of the full face on, but even then it's not just a static full face. There's a lot of movement involved that she's dancing and the colored confetti types of effects on the edge. The character that has the little lilies of the valley on the side. I love the blues on this one with the swirl of the hair and the gleaming of the necklace. And then that is the end. 
So as much as I love tiger lilies and love this drawing, something like that would have been so pretty if they did it in the full color with the orange. And you know, the part of it comes down, of course, to price. They can't afford to have every single thing in here done in color. So they did the best they could with enough to make the book interesting, but not so much that the book ended up being you know, $500 and no one could afford to buy it. So a very nicely done book in an age where doing full color was very expensive. I think it's gotten much better now in our advent of modern printers, but this is well looking at to see the art style and to see how they approached the different challenges of showing colorful flowers and showing fairies and sometimes having the eye go to the fairy creature and sometimes having the eye go to the flowers and have the fairies sort of being um, hidden in the background to show that they were being able to be hidden from most people who walk through the garden. So let me know if you have any questions about Adventures by Leaflight.